it's chicken cooked in red wine, all right? So obviously there's red wine goes into it. Now, in relation to the wine, you do really want a good wine because the sauce itself is going to be made from the wine, all right? Now, the wine is actually going to be the base for the marinade. Um, so I would use a good Burgundy um, to actually, good, actually a good Beaujolais, a good Beaujolais would work extremely well. That's what we're going to be using today in this. The next part of Cocovan is silver skin onions. That's a classic part of the dish as well. Um, again, these are small onions that are going to be cooked whole as they are. Um, they're going to be going into the marinade as well. Mushrooms, we're going to be um, quartering these mushrooms. If we really wanted to be, you know, fancy and um, la di da, what we do is we turn these mushrooms, um, but we're not going to go that far. Carrots, as I said, carrots are optional. Um, you can put them in, which we are doing here, all right? Um, also as well, lardons of bacon, um, fresh lardons of bacon, which we have here. We're gonna actually prepare this bacon into, um, we're gonna put this bacon into lardons when, when we're ready to go. And um, we're not quite there yet. And then basically, you can as well finish off with a brinois of potato. Now, the potato really should go in at the end, um, about a half an hour before it's finished cooking. So I'm, I have this brunoise potato and carrot here. I'm keeping this aside, and um, this is going to be kept for when we're actually cooking the veg. So, but this is not going into the marinade. And then the last but not least is again this is optional, but uh, I prefer it in the actual recipe. Is a good shot of brandy. So does that answer your question? <clears throat> yes, sir. Okay, now, that's it. Ready to go. Okay, now, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to show you how to create a bouquet garni, all right? Um, a what? A what? A bouquet garni, all right? A bouquet garni is a natural flavor enhancer, all right? It consists of parsley stalks, fresh thyme, and bay leaves, all right? We're going to use, you'll, you'll see exactly what I'm talking about, right? We're going to use um, the leek, as we're going to use actually these leaves here, okay, as a base to put the actual bokeh garni together. Alright, now again, a bokeh garni is classic in relation to French cookery. We want to trim it off, alright, get them both around the same length. Okay, now, first things first, parsley stalks into the centre like that. Right? Next, we want, because we're doing a large marinade, right, we want to have about three bay leaves, okay? So, we're actually going to do, we'll, we'll use four, four bay leaves. Bay leaves on top, like so. Now, fresh thyme, like so. That's about enough. Okay. Now, see the way I've done that? We're making a sandwich. All right. This last piece of the leek goes on top, like that. Then, either we use an elastic band or thread, butcher's twine, shit, you know, kitchen twine. Okay. So pick it up around once around three times, last time. Now, what we have here is we have our bokeh garni, right? Now, as it is, that, smell it. Yeah? Strong. Strong, yeah, but that's exactly what we want. It's strong because it's gonna do two things. One, while it's marinating in there with the wine and the chicken and everything else, right? 
it's going to pass out flavor into the chicken, the vegetables, the wine, everything. And all of that, right, is going to go into the actual sauce itself. And as well as that, when we're actually cooking the chicken and the wine, this is also going to go into the cooking liquor as well, right? So we're getting we're getting two two bangs out of it, right? So one is going to be for the marinade and two is for the cooking, right? So that's your classic bouquet garni. As I said, bay leaf, thyme, parsley stock, either wrapped in twine, kitchen twine, or uh, kitchen twine or elastic, right? As I said, leaf, stock, thyme. That's it, parcel, all right? So that's going into the marinade. Now, next into the marinade goes our... Yeah, chopped in. Nope, they're going in whole. These are, there's a magic flying carrot there. Um, these are, our, um, these are the silver skin onions that we talked about, yeah? So they're literally going in like that, okay? Next is we need to throw in some mushrooms. Now, what we want to do with this is now we're taking away the chopping knives and we're using smaller knives, okay? And again, remember, use the right knife for the right job. Right? right, let's go. Let's get these mushrooms quartered, all right? Now, what I mean by quartered, go on to this, okay? Like that, in four, all right? And once we have them done, they're going into the marinade, all right? That's that. Yeah, we can pull that in. <clears throat> now, how are we doing? Yeah, straight in. Okay. Now remember, if you're doing this at home, you would be um, obviously nowhere near using the same levels of portions as we are here. Okay. Um, it's just as we said here, we've got a function on that's coming up and so we're doing it in an industrial batch all right so that's that now can I have the chicken please first things first legs in okay so what we want to do is we want to just bury these down into the actual um, marinades or the, the actual the, the, the mirepoix itself okay so get them right down into it and bury them down and okay don't worry about where they're going because they're all going to be coming back out again once we have marinated these and left them in the marinade now watch your fingers off the, your skin off the bones because they are sharp all right You know what, I think we could actually split that in two. Yep, I think we can split that in two. Okay, so let's just take We can literally have it, exactly. Will you remember to remind me to order kitchen twine, yeah? Yeah. Okay, so there's your half, there's your half, sure as well that the bouquet garni is right down near the bottom okay now how do you fix okay, okay just 
flatten that down. Now, next, we need to get rid of our um, boards now and just get them offside. While we just finish this off, we're going to use them again. Okay, right now, we have the base ready. What's left to go into this marinade now is the brandy and the wine. Okay, so for this, you'd normally use if you're cooking at home and you're cooking for two people, all right, you'd use a shot, a shot of brandy, which is around about two tablespoons of brandy, okay? We're not, obviously, so we're using two double brandies here. So you can pop yours in there, and I'll pop mine in here, okay? So take those glasses off side for me, please. And now, the last is we have our bottle of Beaujolais here. Now we're using, um, we're actually using a good Beaujolais for this, okay? Um, we're going to use the complete bottle for both of these. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to split it in half. say that we might even need more red wine to finish this off. What I want to do with this, well, <clears throat> Declan has gone to get us another bottle of wine, um, is we want to make sure that we get the chicken down into it. Can you see the way it's actually already starting to change colour? Can you see that? It's actually gone slightly darker, so even since we poured that wine in on top. Now, by the time this has completed its marinade, right, like as I said, this is going to need a minimum of 60 hours marinating. All right, three days. Okay, it's, it's a long time, yeah. But the whole thing about it is, is that the the process at the end of it is well worth the wait. Okay, because the end result, flavor-wise, is absolutely spectacular. So um, we have another bottle of wine just coming into us now. That's great. Thank you. Now, okay, so now we're just finishing off the marinade here, and this is all going to go this now. Okay, now, like as I said, we need to just press this down, so make sure, watch your sleeves and your jacket there, press it down and get it, try and get as much of the chicken submerged under the wine as possible, okay? Now, as I said, you can already, even though the wine has only gone in another few minutes, you can see the chicken already starting to change colour, yeah? So what's going to happen is, by the time the marinade is, the marination is complete, when we take this chicken out, and when the chicken is cooked, it's going to be completely red. Right? It's going to absorb the tannins out of the grape, the colours, okay? And the flesh of the chicken is going to be completely red. Right? So, that's it. That's the Coquavan marinade. Um, the last thing now to do is to cover it, get it into the fridges, and leave it marinating. We're not even going to look at it, we're not going to touch it, we're just going to cover it and walk away from it. And as I said, we're going to come back to it in around about three days' time, and we'll finish off the cooking process then. So you can remember what the chicken looks like now, guys. Um, and chefs, remember this as well, that when the chicken um, goes in, <laughs> you need to make sure that you use a good quality wine with this, okay? Because it's the wine that's actually going to be used to create the sauce. So what you don't want is you don't want a cheap bottle of wine to go in onto this because all that's gonna happen is it's just gonna reflect the end result in the sauce, okay? So um, that's it, chefs. I'll talk to you when we're back uh, cooking this off and we'll see you in three days time.